The 80s and 90s were a hodgepodge of anti-drug nerds trying to ruin our cool lives by telling us drugs weren't copacetic. Eggs on frying pans. This is your brain on drugs. Learning it from your dad. I learned it by watching you. And the granddaddy of them all. People will tell you that drugs are cool and that everybody's doing them. But you know what? You're wrong. Dare. Today we're learning how the D.A.R.E. campaign was a bigger failure than you realized. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the Weird History channel. Alright kids, let's take a non-hallucinogenic trip back to the 80s. <coughs> Some of the earliest studies of D.A.R.E.'s effectiveness exposed D.A.R.E. as being a pretty useless program for keeping teenagers off of drugs and alcohol. It seemed D.A.R.E.'s zero-chill educational approach to keeping these curious, hormonal, rebellious little hooligans off of drugs was not working, and in fact was having the opposite intended effect. Turns out, teenagers are less of a learn-by-riveting PowerPoint presentation and more of a do-it-and-see-if-we-die kind of learners. They might have been taught to say, just say no, but they were way more likely to say, ah, yes to a bag full of those items they learned about in school if they completed the D.A.R.E. program than those who didn't. If only D.A.R.E. had listened to its dad who told them this would happen. Who taught you how to do this stuff? SMART, the program that inspired and birthed D.A.R.E., also failed in its earlier days suffering from the same arrogant idea that students would blindly listen to an authority having never seen a John Hughes film or seemingly met a teenager. But when SMART reached out to D.A.R.E. to inform them of the changes made to better the program by making it work, D.A.R.E. resisted. It is, after all, right there in its name. The most damning study was commissioned by the National Institute of Justice and conducted by the Research Triangle Institute that said the program was occupying space and hoarding funding from other programs that actually had value and, you know, worked. The NIJ never published the findings that D.A.R.E. was a dud, so the charade continued in schools across the nation. Meanwhile, our fragile youths were being corrupted by the temptation created by the very thing meant to keep them on the straight and narrow. The temptation of knowledge. As mentioned, D.A.R.E. was so bad at keeping teens drug-free, it accidentally turned them into little Jim Morrisons thanks to a fun social psychology phenomenon known as the boomerang effect. Basically, by telling somebody they shouldn't do something because they might die, it makes the person morbidly curious to test that theory. Cheating death? Oh. Sounds fun! Couple that with teenagers' very loose grasp on how fragile life is and, well, you're gonna tempt dumb kids to do some experimenting. Dare might have been saying, doing lines of cocaine can cause your heart to stop beating, but all those rebellious teens heard was, that'll show, Dad. Who taught you how to do this stuff? They did have a lion mascot named Darren, and pretty sure Smart didn't, so, you know, they knew what kids liked. Despite mountains of overwhelming evidence, the general public stood by the D.A.R.E. program throughout the 90s. Parents loved D.A.R.E. It was nice. It had good intentions. There were police involved. It got to talk to your kids about drugs, so you didn't have to. There was a little mascot. What's not the love? Who cares if it was a giant waste of time and money? D.A.R.E. settled into their impeccable reputation by having the audacity to say, knocking D.A.R.E. is like kicking your mother or saying that apple pie doesn't taste good, ignoring that some apple pie is nasty and it might not taste good. And look, some mothers might need to be kicked. What if your mom wasn't moving and you needed to see if she was alive? A little kick might be all that's standing between her and death. And now, since everything is bad and facts are alternative, now there's a push to bring D.A.R.E. back to schools. Oh, did you think this story was not going to involve Jeff Sessions? Because this story definitely involves Jeff Sessions. Former Attorney General and ex-Keebler elf Jeff Sessions said in 2017 that, despite research to the contrary, he still believed D.A.R.E. worked. Why? Well, because he just did. That's enough to spend money on things that objectively don't work, right? I mean, case in point, the wall. At least D.A.R.E. was cheap, right? Oh no, D.A.R.E. cost a ton of money. D.A.R.E. and the Lion does not work for free, guys. There was a lot of demand for meddling lion mascots who didn't do drugs and demanded the same life standards for everyone in the 90s. What started local to Los Angeles soon spread to an estimated 75% of the country and was so vastly supported that local, state, and federal governments gave the program somewhere between $200 million to $2 billion just in the year 2003, well after several studies proved it ineffective. Think about that. 
$2 billion to fund a program that fundamentally did not work. Only after several years' worth of research that could no longer be ignored and a detailed financial audit did the government stop hemorrhaging money into the program. The idea behind the original D.A.R.E. curriculum was simple. Tell kids about the devastating consequences of cigarettes, alcohol, and illegal drugs, and they'll be less likely to use them. Foolproof, right? In theory, it should work. In practice, it did not. But lazy teachers who didn't want to come up with a better idea and police officers who just needed to show they were trying were convinced that education was their best tool when it came to prevention, without realizing that such a direct approach may not work on young children. Current D.A.R.E. President Frank Pagarios once said, everyone believed that if you just told students how harmful these substances and behaviors were, they'd stay away from them. Unfortunately, young kids weren't as receptive to the education as a prevention approach. School is boring, learning is hard, everybody just wants to go home, watch TV, and eat snacks, and not hear about lung cancer when you're 12 years old. Despite this, the program continued. It was, after all, the 80s, and let me tell you, people hated drugs in the 80s. You know, getting into drugs and being high is a real stupid thing to do. Every decade needs a scary boogeyman to rally behind and blame all of our deep-rooted societal problems on. And in the 80s and into the 90s, the blanket term drugs was the 9-11 of the times. And who was steering this illegal caravan of bad hombres? A sweet little old lady by the name of Nancy Reagan. In the early 1980s, America's grandma had had it with all of these drugs and demanded the use of America just say no. First Lady Nancy went from school to school telling children to just say no to all of these drugs with a t-shirt. Once she'd absorbed enough child's fear to energize herself, Nancy would swing into the occasional rehab center to gather horrible tales of people. She then shared these horror stories with all of America, which in turn made the whole country say, hell no, to people who said, hell yes, to drugs. Today, there's a drug and alcohol abuse epidemic in this country, and no one is safe from it. And the plan worked. A boogeyman was created. The Reagan administration's pulverizing advocacy for anti-drug causes resulted in 64% of Americans in 1985 believing drugs were the number one issue in the nation. Sorry, AIDS. So won't you join us in this great new national crusade? Nancy's PR campaign worked, and America was all in on D.A.R.E. Yes, teach our kids the perils of drug addiction, Darren. Give the people what they want. But like the cordless phones, beepers, and the Rachel, D.A.R.E. couldn't make it past the 90s, as it became harder to ignore the evidence that the program was deeply flawed and an abject failure. Move over, drug abuse resistance education, and make way for the snazzy new program with a very unfortunate name, Keeping It Real. The program Keeping It Real replaced D.A.R.E. in 2009 in middle schools and eventually expanded to elementary schools in 2013. Choosing to forego the 45-minute dreary lecture that children normally enjoy, Keeping It Real opts for a more interactive model that teachers and D.A.R.E. officers noted children didn't hate. Student engagement was markedly higher. Without a regular anti-drug program, it's a cool anti-drug program. You could tell a surly teen to just say no until you're blue in the face and pat yourself on the back for all the good work that you did that day. But in the real life scenario that this same teen is offered a fistful of bud, the odds are pretty high they panic and say, okay, sure, and just take some of that devil's cabbage. Keeping it real arms teens with more tools in their belt by approaching potential drug solicitations in more realistic terms. The core of the program is in the acronym, refuse, explain, avoid, and leave. Real proposes at first offering an explanation for why they don't want to do something or if possible, attempt to avoid the issue. I see Billy is offering meth to my classmates. I think I'll take a different route home and maybe avoid Billy for the day. And finally, if that doesn't work, they can leave. Oh right, I don't have to do meth. I have a body autonomy and I can just leave and go somewhere where there is no meth. The great thing about this program is it's applicable to so many other scenarios in these young kids' lives. The goal of keeping it real is to help kids get out of any situation that makes them uncomfortable almost as if teenage drug use is a symptom of being a complicated, growing, changing person trying to fit into a society of insecure, relentlessly cruel teenagers and not the cause of all their problems. And you know the best thing about keeping it real? It actually works. 
The results so far have been overwhelmingly positive, according to a report from the Scientific American that concluded students who completed Keeping It Real indicated they used drugs and alcohol less than those in the control group that did not. The report claims the skills and ideas taught by Keeping It Real are more likely to stick with students and reduce substance abuse at a rate that was 72% higher than the control group. The old boring snooze fests of dare pasts have been replaced with student interaction and group work, teaching them various ways to just say no to drugs. According to Sergeant Christine Rapp of Indiana, a DARE officer for 16 years, the interaction and group work are awesome because we learn by doing much more than by hearing. When they learn the ways to say no to friends, they absolutely love getting up in front of the class and acting those out. The world doesn't need any more drug addicts or alcoholics. Do but what they definitely do need are more improv troops. Did DARE keep you away from drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.